Emily Vaquero Flores, and I just wanted to give you a quick view of our um, studio um, and also a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about today. I just want to uh, present you to my friend Owen. Hi, I'm Owen. And I'm Charlotte. Charlotte is a part of Professor Spain's class, and they did a whole big section here on our uh, site in Charleswood. Yeah, to elaborate on what Owen is saying, these maps feature different experiences and things we've noticed about the neighborhood. Some examples are the zoning codes, vacancies, vegetation, space, and circulation throughout the neighborhood. We really found that there was a lack of certain needs in the neighborhood as well, and we wanted to make them noted. All right, Charlotte, if we layer all these maps on top of each other, what can that tell us? What can it show us? It really shows us there's these hot spots within the neighborhood where things are really like close together and there's a lot of activity. I think that there's these hot spots due to major intersections within the neighborhood, Cecil being one and Gerard Avenue being one. We also have a big, we have a big college right in the middle, Gerard College, which is basically segregating the neighborhood from the exterior spaces around it. Hello again, my name is Emily. And I'm Jess, and Emily and I mapped intangible spaces, starting with sidewalks and bus stops, as well as religious spaces and commercial spaces and parks. And then Emily connected them with string. Yeah, so basically it's like the intangible places where people tend to move around, as well as the places like the parks, the churches, and the different places that Jess has pointed out with the different colored pins. Um, the ones that are more dense kind of highlight that they're more concentrated in circulation. Hi, I'm Lydia and I map the demographics of Sharswood. Um, blue representing the people of color, yellow representing the Latinx community, um, red representing the Asian community, and green representing the white community. Hi, I'm Jeremy Schachter. Uh, I model this along with my colleague Evan Henderson and we designed the uh, parks and green spaces and tree lines of the town of Sharswood. Hi, I'm Emma and I map the culture within Sharswood. Uh, yellow being the MLK protests along the Gerard Wall. Purple being the PHA protests that are currently going on. Green being the parks and recs uh, spaces in the community. Blue being uh, music icons and yellow are arts and talents and red delineates the red line going through the community. Hi, my name is Kayla. I mapped out um, household sizes versus um, employment rate. Over here we can see um, the house sizes that are married and then the numbers represent the average um, uh, household size and then underneath each number you see the colors that's representing the changes in employment rate. Blake, tell me what redlining is in this historic map of Philadelphia. So, for instance, ab um, above the red line would be where banks would offer unfavorable loans to you know, members of you know, like, like, like minorities, and then below that is where the banks would offer you know, very, very favorable loans, you know, better property values, uh, and so on and so forth. So that created that red line happened right across to here in our site. Um, there's also that also kind of contributed to an atmosphere of. Um, some inequality and strife. Um, in 1964, we have the, the Columbia Avenue race riot, um, but there's also other things to know about the community. Some of them are less visible. Remy, tell me about why stoops are so important. Stoops are very important to the community. They add a lot of culture to the sidewalk, and it's a all around very public gathering space for the people that live there and their neighbors to have conversations and interactions with each other. It all depends on the area you're in. There's some one-way streets with different types of parking and people that end up actually parking on the sidewalk and so that affects people walking in the area. So there's some very narrow streets and there's some very spread out streets. Uh, there's definitely a, a lot of types. There's um, very historical 
have front porches or front stoops, um, and there's very new renovated ones. Hi, I'm Summer. I'm Annie. I'm Jess. I'm Caitlin. I'm Blake. And today we're going to be giving you an overview of our project using our specific design language. So we're going to be building a community center that is oriented for our clients and our data set that we analyzed throughout the semester. And this relates to our studio because in um, studio we're working towards to design how um, one experiences space. And, and we're going to introduce some terms that we use to create our centers. Um, we use spatial uh, awareness to analyze the tangible and intangible spaces to communicate with our community. We're using the term sidewalk citizenship to show the importance of remaining a respectful member of the community when creating your design values. We're using editing with intention to generate a lot of information and then edit it to accurately show what we're trying to focus on. And then we're using a client-based approach to be informed by our project. So the quote feels like door um, is basically taking the experience of a space and transferring that experience onto another site or space. And then we're showing the importance of context because it allows us to hone in on the importance of every variable affecting your design choices. Um, Gina Silkai kind of relates to feels like door where we are using the specific feeling of our community to build a center that our community can engage with and engage as a uh, group. Hi, I'm Evan Henderson, and um, we're going to be going over some of our learning objectives for this uh, critique and for this uh, project. Uh, I think what I want to start with is the idea of understanding um, and fully understanding what genus loci is, especially in the context of Charleswood. Um, for us, it's embodying the spirit of a place rather than its literal identity. Well, although the literal identity does play a large part in it, it's more about the experience and how you feel once you're within the space. Because if you take a step back and look at it from a look at it on paper or look at it on a map, you can understand a certain amount, and you can understand to a certain extent. But when you're in the space, walking around, talking to the people and learning their stories and how they feel after having been there for years and years, you develop a different form of understanding, um, one that you can't get on paper. And I feel like that's uh, a large part of the formation of this project. And I think Evelyn will take it from here. Hi, I'm Evelyn. Um, so one of the second objectives that we value is process. And we really value the idea of going through and finding out what the community wants and needs rather than focusing on what we think they want or need um, because we're more interested in doing a community-based design that helps them rather than that's the opposite of that. Hi, my name is Connor Donahue and another thing that we are focusing on with this project and really this semester is the ability for individual input as well as um, group progress. So the way that this whole semester has been structured, there has been a lot more emphasis on the group as a whole, usually from what we've experienced in our design studios is a fact it's a lot of individual based projects and work. But in terms of what we've been doing, we've been like doing a lot of forms of like pieces and many things coming together in group work, kind of showing the fact that not every project is just like individual things. It's having the ability of getting different viewpoints and different sides and different upbringings, just a lot of different people and like groups coming together to help understand things. And the uh, last thing that we wanted to focus on for this project was um, to practice sidewalk citizenship, which uh, I know is not really a conventional term that is used very often but we've developed this phrase as a way to just exist, um, not even in just this project alone, but in life. And it's just about going above and beyond uh, being a normal neighbor. You know, on the, when you're walking down the street, say hi to your neighbors, do go that extra mile to be that extra positive force in the world. And while we were at the site in the neighborhood, 
we always try to just be an embodiment of positivity and positive influence as much as we can with the limited time we have with them. Hi, Jeremy again. Uh, here we have our large site model where we have designed for multiple clients and we found these clients through extensive research. And as you can see along this street, you have all our different designs. I'm in the, uh, the Master of Urban Design program. So it's a newer program and um, this, this program and what we've learned in the studio has helped me learn about how all these uh, infills and all these creations of new designs have, have a dialogue with the rest of both the community, the city, and the general site as a whole. Rather than a typical renovation, you know, we're, um, this project is focused on the amplification of existing structures and properties. So for instance, we have the community garden you know, over on uh, this corner um, of the rec center. It would also be a different uh, areas like basketball courts, baseball field, and lots of green space to work with. Um, but mainly we're working over in this um, in the area like where, like where the pool is. So sort of um, and, like um, approaching different renovation ideas and sort of um, how can we use the existing structure but also uh, add the different things to the area. Yeah, since I'm seeing it firsthand, the different um, buildings going up, I'm kind of um, seeing them a little differently. We we're about reevaluating like what I thought initially. Um, at first, I thought some of these buildings were really nice and cool, but now I'm realizing it's taking a lot away from the original community and what it stood for or what it stands for. So you were talking about you're appreciating a lot more of the nuance in the yeah, neighborhood and the community-based stuff. Blake, for as an undergrad, how has it been for you to um, go visit an actual like community where architects and projects are being built right now, and you can take a stab at it yourself? Well, I mean, especially since like I was virtual first year, you know, actually getting to visit the sites in, like this semester and second year, it's given a lot of like different like, perspective, you know, from all like, from things we did first year, you know, but also you know it gives you like a foundation for you know like at least for me, you know, for you know it's like a precedent you know like, to work with. How many times have you guys been to the site so far, do you think? Five. Five? Five or six. You go oh. home to the site every day. I was going to yeah. say, I, <laughs> I drive through it a decent bit and then okay. I go around it, so I feel like I've, well, I guess you could say I just live there. It's so. part of home. Yeah. <laughs> no, All right. right. Thanks, guys.